Hello, uh, welcome to Do-It-Yourself Dino. I'm Eugene Blanchard. This is part seven, it's called More Testing. Originally I was gonna call it Tricking the Dino, or really what it should be is Tricking Myself. So in this section, what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about the mechanical mods, the motor shaft, the, the chain. Uh, we're gonna do testing with six magnets instead of uh, the two that I had before, and then we're gonna test with three magnets. And then uh, the last part is we're going to be verifying the torque and HP results, or the horsepower results. So I got the uh, motor here, and on the motor this used to be threaded. When I put on my adapter here, the screws dug in the thread, chewed it all up, and that. So I do have a uh, ten-tooth sprocket, and it's a half-inch diameter. This was uh, 5.8, so it's 125 thou bigger. And I'm thinking, how the heck am I going to turn this down? Well, this is a motor, and basically I made a do-it-yourself lathe, right? So I basically hooked up a file to my machining vise and gently put it on here. Uh, this was really good to uh, smooth it out, right? You can do this by hand. When it spins, it's not hard at all. You know, just hold it so that when it spins, it goes over your shoulder, doesn't go into you. And you can hold it, spin it, take it down. If, when you, if you hand hold it and put it on, this is, isn't going to be round, right? But if you put it on a vise here and then you just gently touch it, it'll take out any bumps and roundness uh, out of round and fix it. So it's, it's quite easy to do. And I would uh, turn it on and demonstrate, but I only have one hand and it takes two hands to do it. All right, so I finished here. Uh, what I did is uh, uh, this, the file gives it a little bit of a rough edge. Um, it's incredibly smooth and, cre and what I did is I uh, wrapped around some sandpaper, this was 220 grit, and just polished it off like this as it ran and it came out quite smooth and it's very round. Uh, when this spins you can't feel with your finger any uh, wobble or anything like that so it worked out quite well. And here's the gear. It's a, so this was a 0.625 and it's now with threads. It's now down to half inch or 0.5 and this slips on quite nicely. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fool the uh, DinoSim program uh, and to uh, trick it into thinking that it's measuring the motor speed. Right? So it's a 3 to 1 gear ratio. So I'm going to tell it that it has two sensors on my rotor here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put six. Right? So two times three is six. So this is going to be turning at uh, roughly 1200 RPM. But the program is going to think that it's running at 3600. Now to divide this up into six, it's actually pretty easy. Is you take a protractor and what you do is you take the radius so I have my mark here. This is the uh, my reference. Then all I have to do is go over here. That will make my first uh, point. I go from here to here. Here's my second one, where I can go from this side here. This is my other reference, and it divides it up evenly into six parts. So I put little marks here. I don't know if we can see them. And that. Stick my magnets on at my marks, and it's divided up into six sections. All you have to do is take a protractor. This is the radius of the protractor, and you mark it down like this. And it works out fine. So uh, some of the changes are, I've got a shorter chain on, so there's uh, less slack, so it's not going to flap around as much. I've got a 10-tooth gear, and uh, as I mentioned before, I, I filed down the shaft so it would fit on nicely. So uh, the other one is I've got uh, six magnets on here, and the six magnets are going to fool the DinoSim program into thinking that it's measuring the motor speed. For the uh, first test, what I did is I set up simple dyno as configured as one ninth the uh, moment of inertia. 
Uh, the moment of inertia was 0 0.152, and I figured that if it's uh, going through the gears, what the motor will see is um, when you calculate it out, uh, 3 to 1 gear ratio, 3 squared is 9, so the moment of inertia will be 1 ninth. Then I also said, even though I had 6 uh, magnets, I told it that there was only 2. So that way it would fool it thinking that the roller was actually turning the same speed as the uh, motor. Uh, this is uh, the initial uh, power curve fitting analysis. It actually fit pretty good. There's a lot of noise here. I'm not sure why this is. It's like a little s sine wave in. Uh, when I looked at the uh, uh, actual horsepower curve, what we found is that we're getting 51.8 horsepower at 4,000 RPM. So obviously this is wrong. So we know that we can't use this. So I went to uh, testing number two. So in test number two, what I said is the moment of inertia is one to one. I'm still only telling it that it has two magnets. I marked sensors here for some reason. I just can't get that in my head. But I only told it it had two magnets, even though there were six on it. So what we're doing is we're uh, fooling it by thinking that the roller is turning faster or the same speed as the motor. Right? Uh, our power curve fitting was quite well. Again, we still have a lot of this uh, sort of a interference coming on. I'm not sure where that is coming from. Right. So then we looked at the horsepower. What we found is horsepower dropped to 16.6. It would be expected um, because we're telling it that it has a higher moment of inertia on the dyno. So still, uh, we're not even close. Right. So in continuing on, uh, what I did is test three. I said uh, on simple dyno that we had our true moment of inertia and that we had we're using six magnets. Uh, and of course, we get our Windows update that says it's going to start now, right? Um, it always happens in the middle of something, Windows is going to update. So we did six uh, sensors and we've got our curve and we find out. Uh, what happens is that the fit data is this line here. Uh, that's what we want it to fit in. And this is our actual raw data. So it's fitting pretty close here. So when we look at our horsepower, it's still too high. 9.55 uh, horsepower, way too high. So we know what we're doing is not right, right? So we're not fooling um, simple dyno, we're fooling ourselves. So I continued on with test four, and test four, as I said, uh, a gear ratio was three to one. Uh, that was in our simple dyno setup. We said that it was a three to one gear ratio. A one to one uh, moment of inertia, six sensors. Uh, we get a nice curve fit again. And we come up here, and now we're down to two point two horsepower at 1253 RPM, right? So this is interesting is that our horsepower is lower even though we're using six sensors in the previous one. Let's go back a couple here. So it says it's 2871. So something's not quite right here. So I'm thinking that what happened is that uh, with six sensors, my laptop doesn't have enough power to do the calculations with six sensor in real time. So what it is, I knocked off every second magnet. And, uh, so now I have three magnets. Basically, I told Simple Dial, uh, it's a three to one gear ratio, one to one moment of inertia, uh, using the original moment of inertia, and that it only had three magnets. Uh, we got a, a power fit curve that uh, fits pretty nice here. And when I look at the uh, horsepower output, now I'm getting something more realistic, 1.11 horsepower at 965 RPM. So that, that's pretty valid, right? So now, uh, basically what I proved is that if you follow the instructions of Simple Dyno, <laughs> you're in the ballpark. One of the things I wanted to do was uh, uh, take a look at the curve and uh, see if we can calculate it. We've got raw data here. So I'm going to look at the, uh, in green is our RPM, right? And this is our green line here. And we have our time. So I change this from RPM to time. And, that, and I can pick two points on it. So I'm going to pick this point here. So at time 0 0.600. And this is roughly, I calculate about, guesstimate is that better word, as 275 RPM. At this point here is, uh, uh, the time is 1.9. So this is a, I believe that's 1.8, so that's roughly 1.9, and the RPM is 993. So I'm going to use these two times. So this is called time 1, RPM 1, time 2, and RPM 2. And what I can do is actually do some calculations. 
So in order to do some calculations, what we have to do is use some formulas. Yes, I know, nobody said there would be math involved, but there is. So torque is equal to the moment of inertia times the difference in the RPM. So that'd be RPM2 minus RPM1 over 308. That's just a uh, uh, modifier. And it's going to be 308 times the difference in time from time 2 to time one, right? So basically we're saying torque is the moment of inertia times the difference in RPM divided by 308 times difference in time. Horsepower is equal to torque times RPM divided by 5252, 5252. Now one of the very first problems we're going to run into is units. So we're halfway between metric and halfway between imperial. Uh, simple dyno uses a metric world partly and I like to use imperial. So what we found for power in the metric world it's measured in watts. In the imperial world it's measured in horsepower. In the metric world rotation is rads per second I believe and in imperial world is RPM. Um, moment of inertia in the metric world is kilograms per meter squared. Imperial world is pounds per feet squared. So what we need to do is convert our pounds for our kilograms per meter, that's what we know our moment of inertia is, into uh, pounds per feet squared. Uh, it's really simple. It's 23.73 uh, is our, our magic number. We multiply our kilograms per meter squared, and, and that comes out to pounds per feet squared. So moment of inertia, we started with our, uh, 0 0.152 kilogram meter squared times 23.73 gives us our 3.6 pound feet squared. So now what we can do is actually look at the numbers. Uh, so we have our torque. Torque is our moment of inertia times RPM2, or the change in RPM over 308 times the change in time. If we look at our curve that we looked at earlier, we said time 1 is 0 0.6, time 2 is 1.9. So we're going to take our, our change in time is from 1.9 minus 0 0.6. Change in RPM is from RPM2, which is 993, minus RPM1, which is 275. So now we know where these numbers come from. 3.6 is our moment of inertia. We calculated it over here, 3.6. Uh, we have to keep everything in the same units, right? If we want uh, horsepower, we have to be in foot-pounds, right? So we take our uh, change in RPM was 993 minus 275 divided by 308 times 1.9 minus 0.6. When we work that out, we come up with 6.45 foot-pounds, roughly. Right? Horsepower is equal to torque times RPM over 52.52. We're going to use our 6.45, and we're going to use our upper uh, RPM. So 6.45 times 993 divided by 52.52 gives us our 1.22 horsepower. And Simple Dino was saying that it was 1.11. So we're in the ballpark. Uh, one of the things I also did was electrical measurements when I first started. So I, I took my digital voltmeter and... Uh, uh, I measured the voltage under load. It was 120 volts AC. I thought it might be, uh, I have it running on an extension cord. I thought maybe there'd be a voltage drop there, but it was it was right on uh, 120 volts AC, so I was pretty impressed with that. Uh, the current was right at the limit of my meter. It was 9.8 amps, so power equals voltage times current. Uh, 120 volts times 9.8 gives us 1180 watts. Uh, our horsepower is watts divided by 746 uh, so 1180 divided 746 gives us 1.582 horsepower. So a lot higher electrical cu current is being supplied to the motor than I expected. I was doing research on uh, small motors like this. This motor is a ca capacitor start motor and it's only about 75% efficient. When you get up to about 100 horsepower, it's, it's very efficient around 95%. So if I add that efficiency factor in, our horsepower is equal to uh, 0.75, that's our 75%, times 1.5, we get about 1.18 horsepower. So the numbers seem to be uh, uh, adding up. Uh, there's a few points I want to make here. Uh, when was the 3 to 1 rate setting in the uh, dyno setup? Um, it doesn't affect the horsepower calculation. We'll talk about that in a little while here. Uh, but what it, where it does show up is that on your motor RPM. So uh, what happens is our RPM 1, it was our roller, and we were running at that 1267 RPM. And then what the 3 to 1 does is calculate the motor RPM, right? So here's our motor RPM. It's 
if you go three times 1267, it comes out to 3,801. 3, so basically what the three to one setting is used to calculate what the motor RPM. Uh, there's something here called maximum corrected speed. And if you were running a, a vehicle on a roller and you had tires, uh, this one is set for uh, meters per second, but you can actually change that to miles per hour or kilometers per hour, I believe. Miles per hour for sure. So you can actually see what would be the equivalent. So if you had your tire settings in and you had your gearbox, uh, it would actually calculate what the RPM is of uh, uh, your wheels going on a roller type dyno. Uh, now, another one I want to talk about was the uh, torque and horsepower. So what happens is horsepower is not affected by gear ratio, right? So the horsepower of your motor is the same horsepower as the roller. Sometimes they call it wheel horsepower and engine horsepower, motor horsepower. If it was a 100% efficient system, they'd be identical, right? Doesn't matter if you're going through gears, horsepower doesn't change. But what does happen is that you will lose efficiency through your transmission, your gearbox, and then you'll get a lower wheel horsepower. What happens is that torque is affected by the gear ratio, and here's a really good example. So the roller torque was 8.29 at 1267 RPM. Uh, the motor torque was 2.76 at 3800 RPM. So if I look at 8.29, is our gear ratio is 3 to 1. 3 times 2.676 gives us our 8.29. Conversely, 1267 times 3, that's our gear ratio, gives us our RPM. So torque and RPM are related through the gearbox, but horsepower is not. All right, well, thank you very much. Uh, that's all we're going to cover for today. The next step is uh, well, I think what we're going to have to do is uh, put on a, a couple, another motor. We don't know what the specs of this motor are, um, so we can't use it as a reference. So I think I've got some uh, garage door opener motors. I think they're about a third horsepower or a half horsepower I'm going to throw on and do some further testing. Thank you very much.